If you're coming in for the first time, you're going to see tutorials pop up. You're going to see a notification about our most recent updates to this version of our platform. Here we need, we need three pieces of, of information. If you look at those three pieces at a high level, you need what you're going to assess. So here I'm using SecureWatch. So we're going to be doing a facility assessment today. But again, you can do a vendor assessment. You can do uh, any, any type of assessment. You can have a scope uh, following the same process. You're going to need the people that participate in, in the process. So their email address. And you would need the criteria that you're going to evaluate them against. So that's the content library or maybe even your current criteria that you're using now. And we need to get that into the platform. So today we're just going to add a few records, right? We're going to add a person, we're going to add a, a facility. So I don't need to mass upload this data, but it's important to understand that if you had more than 10 of anything that you were going to add into the platform, you wouldn't add them one by one through the screen. You would mass upload that data. We call this a, a bulk upload. And how it works is we, we generate a template um, and we open that template up and we copy data into it. So if we have a list of people that we need to distribute an assessment to, we would populate that information in a template like this. We would uh, then save it, come back to the application and then upload that template back into the platform. And we could do this with any kind of data. It can be a, a list of users as I was just showing, or it could be some kind of criteria that you wanna measure. Uh, it could be the areas that you want to target for assessment. So let's let's put in perspective that we have those things, right? We have the the people, the areas, and the criteria. Um, so let's let's create one area together. So I'm going to call this a, a facility. So let's say risk watch facility one. So this is one of many facilities that we have that we're going to assess. And in this process, I want to invite people into this assessment. So I'm going to select two individuals that I want to participate. If they're not in the platform, we just click the plus symbol and we, we add them in. And by default, they'll only have access to the area, this facility that I'm associating them with. So these other individuals in here will not have access to this area. Uh, this is least privilege security built into the platform uh, throughout the process. Um, so here we're going to assess that risk watch facility. Uh, I could do a bunch of different facilities here if I wanted to. So maybe I have uh, 50 sites that I want to assess or 50 vendors or uh, 50 clients. Um, I would have that Im information organized here and I could assess them all in one single motion. I could say, look, I want to address this criteria across all of these different areas. And just like I added this risk watch facility here, I can add my own criteria, right? I, sh I was showing you a moment ago about how we could do the bulk upload of that. If I wanted to add just a few criteria in, I could easily do that uh, by starting right here. So let's say that this is going to be a risk watch assessment. I'll put the date on here and I want it to start today. So we're going to go ahead and create this. And what's happening right now is the individuals that are associated with those areas that we said we were going to assess, they just received an email. And within that email, uh, there's a link inviting them to the assessment. There's other links in that email um, that introduce our mobile apps. So if they like to do the assessment on a, a mobile version of our application, they can do that as well. Uh, it's important to know those emails are fully customizable, so you can adjust even what our defaults say, make them say something, something else, completely different. But they're going to click that link, and when they uh, when they click the link, they're brought to uh, the application in in a way that supports the level of access that they should have. I'm logged in as a administrator here, so I can see everything. I can see content manager. I can manage like what we assess, how we organize it. I can adjust the settings of the application. But if I'm a contact for an assessment and my role is to only perform assessments that you send me, then I may only be able to see this screen and that's it. Uh, the roles are customizable. You can determine what people see when they come in. But by default, uh, it's going to be an extremely intuitive experience for those individuals. So when they come in, tutorials are going to pop up. They're going to be specific to their role. 
And if they've never used our platform before and they need some help getting started, they can click on any of those tutorials and it will intuitively take them through how to do that assessment in our platform without you needing to train them. Our customers do hundreds of assessments like this every day uh, without training anyone on, on how to do them. And this is, this is how we do it. So what you're seeing over here on, on the left, this is the criteria that I selected to assess in this assessment. This is completely customizable. I can have different names of categories. I can have any kind of criteria that I wanna measure in here. I can measure that any way that I want. I can say yes, no, partial, like this is a custom response that I created. Um, or I can collect a file or some type of comment. The important thing to understand here is for any of our frameworks that we're providing you, look at the, the question here. This is not a control from a regulation. This is written in a way that someone could intuitively answer what's required here. And we're relating that back to the framework that it's related to. So here we're applying a lot of subject matter expertise, right? To assist in moving through this, this assessment. Now, what you can't see is when I say yes to this question, that increases compliance with this framework. Uh, it was, our risk score di did not increase in this scenario. Risk is, is still um, unchanged. Had I said no to this question, well, now my risk score went up. Compliance is decreasing. Um, so you have an overall score for this site right now in real time. Also things that are happening that you can't see right now is when we say no to this, um, for this framework, we provide recommendations off the shelf. So we're already telling you how to fix this issue within the analysis section where we might review this information that was collected in this assessment and in reports that would come out of the system. So kind of a before your eyes view of these scenarios. If, if I take this control, for example, do we have an IDS system? And in, in the scenario that we don't, uh, we're, we're done with this section. We've completed it, we, we would just move on. Notice there's one control here. But if I had said yes, well now I have 12 additional criteria to evaluate. You know, Does IDS meet the security needs of the facility? Uh, does it work with other systems? Have we done a, a cost benefit analysis? So what this promotes is a single motion in going through an assessment, collecting all information that's required in a first pass. So we do this throughout the application in many different areas outside of this one. But from here, let's say that I complete this assessment. I'm done with it now at this point. The next person in the, the workflow for reviewing this information would receive an, uh, an email, an alert, that this assessment's ready for review. And when they click the link in that email, it's gonna bring them to analysis. Now you might be a, a one-man team, right? That's doing assessments. So uh, the system wouldn't send you an alert in that scenario. You would just go to the next step in the process. It would push you through that workflow. From here, what we're seeing are the non-compliant answers to the information that we requested. So here I can see uh, that it's filtering this information for me. I can adjust this filter to get to more specific information that I'm interesting, interested in. But here I'm, I'm seeing for this facility, we do not have signs or barriers to discourage or prevent access to restricted areas. So at this point, if, if I'm not doing the assessment myself, I can go back and forth with the, uh, the individual that provided this information, maybe get some additional information I can view attachments that were provided. You know, if someone took a picture or included some, some type of file, maybe I'm doing more of an audit rather than um, an assessment. Um, I, I could have collected that information, forced that file to be provided in the event that they said, yes, we have policy, right? In a scenario like that. But more importantly, I can, I, I can identify how I might fix this issue. So here, here's the problem that we have, right? We don't have signs restricting, uh, or preventing access to, to certain areas. So the, the default recommendation that we provide in that scenario is to install them. But important to understand at this point that we can influence that recommendation. We can adjust it to say something totally different. Uh, we could remove this recommendation altogether and provide our own. 
um, and the system will store this information. So it's going to learn from you as you do assessments. So from here, in the event that we uh, find and want to fix a few things, we can manually create an activity now that would uh, communicate what we found and what we need to do to fix this issue with anyone. Um, to do this manually, we just click the, uh, the plus symbol there and assign a person and put in a due date. And, and notice what's happening here for this facility um, in this assessment, uh, what we recommended and the issue that we found and all the conversation that we've had, everything's here. Even if I had uploaded some attachment, I would see those attachments here and I'd be able to push that right into someone's inbox and continuously remind them or track this issue and solution until it's resolved. So I mentioned, you know, we're manually creating this activity. We can auto create these. So where we have a recommendation in place, we can automatically turn that into an activity and assign it to someone as part of the process. Uh, you can set that up when you're creating the assessment. The next most obvious step here in process is to uh, explain what we found and what we need to fix to someone else. And there's two ways that we can do that. We can do that through a report that we generate out of the system and hand to someone, or we can do that on a dashboard more interactively with, uh, with someone that might look at multiple facilities or multiple areas, right? And make decisions based on data. So let's look at reporting first. Here we provide you with a, a default report template. So this would include most all sections that you would need to communicate the results of an assessment that was done in our platform. Um, the important thing to understand here is that you can edit our reports. So if I wanted to remove the background of this and put in my own branding and imagery, I could do that. If I wanted to uh, change some of the jargon that's in the, in the report to be more specific around what it is that we did, we could change the information in the template and we would only ever write a report once. Meaning if I spend a week right now writing a report for every single assessment that I do, then I save that time now. I can put that towards other activities like focusing more on remediation. So you only write a report one time in our platform and you can repurpose templates for different types of assessments. So if I wanted this report to come out of our platform for the assessment that we just did, I would just select the assessment and then download that report. And the system's going to build all of the information from this area into this report um, using code and placeholders. And this is intuitive. Uh, it is easy to figure out how, how we build these reports. But a finished report coming out of our platform is going to look like this. So it would have the name of the assessment, the name of the area that was assessed, who participated in the process. It's going to have an executive summary that communicates the risk level, how they scored, what level of compliance was achieved. Is that good or bad? You know, how many issues did we find? What, what are we doing to fix it? You have different types of analysis, like trending analysis and scoring comparative analysis from one area to another. So it's very easy to see that this area is at lower risk than most all of the other areas that we have performed assessments out of the gate. So maybe this area doesn't get the funding. You can use different sections of our report to support many different levels of conversation within your organizations or with clients. So Shifting back to the, the platform here, looking at more of um, an overview of everything. Uh, here we can see all of the um, scores from assessments that were performed. I can see what my average score is over a period of time. If I wanna know why this is going up, I can just click into this and see what's, what's making that score go up. So we, we have a few assessments here that uh, are driving that score up. Uh, we can see a breakdown of those critical areas versus areas that are not so critical. So all of these widgets that I'm showing you here, can, you can drill down into and you can adjust the information within the widget. So if you're including additional metrics or um, other criteria that you're evaluating as part of this score, you can see that information and, and why that is a high risk area. You can also drill down into the findings. So if we had a, a control that was non-compliant in many areas, we could filter by this data 
and understand what we have found that's related and what we're doing to fix those issues and take action. So we're putting activity at your fingertips here. We're making it extremely easy to look at any issue found anywhere and take action on that issue. And then from here, we can see process in real time. So we know where our assessments are at, where our activities are coming out of assessments. And we can look at how we've organized our data and we can drill down into it. So this is like structure or typing or just other classifications of data that, that you're assessing in the platform. 